From Hollywood, the entertainment capital of the world, it's right now with Jimmy Pardo. Now here's your host, Jimmy Pardo. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, writers. Hi, everybody. Boy, okay, angry, a little angry towards me this time. Uh, welcome to Right Now, everybody. Uh, well, glad you guys are here. I'm gonna use the word everybody as much as possible within four sentences uh, so that I can set the record, the everybody record, which, uh, which I believe Nilsson uh, has the record on that uh, with everyone's talking at me. Uh, everybody's talking, Midnight Rider. Wrong, Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Rider, that's not even a movie. Is Midnight Rider a movie? No, but it is, that song is in Midnight Cowboy like the entire length of the movie. It so is, it right? Should, yeah. Too much. You know, get a bigger budget, that's what I say. Right. Give Dustin uh, Hoffman a little less dough and uh, let's, get, let's get a couple of new tunes in there. Look, I have not been asked, but if push came to shove, I would describe this sweater as too small. <laughs> I, I may pull a muscle by how I have my stomach sucked in in order to accommodate this. And, and let me, uh, I've spoken of this before. Jaron, I apologize, you have to hear it again. Here's the deal. I leave this unbuttoned because a, a, a condescending wardrobe lady once said to me, as I was buttoning up my sweater, in the way we were all taught by the great Fred Rogers, and I put my sweater on, I button it up, and she goes, oh no, darling, you leave the two button on, on the bottom unbuttoned, uh, that's hip. And to me, it just says, hey, look at my cock. So, <laughs> which is also too small. <laughs> if I'm gonna ad lib a dick joke, that's gonna be the one. If I'm gonna ad lib a dick joke, we're gonna all have fun with the Midnight Rider. <laughs> Anyhow, here's what's gonna happen. I'm about to bring out a uh, comedian who's gonna do what I describe as standing up comedy. Uh, during their set, these three terrific writers from Television are going to uh, write jokes for me in the moment, on the fly. I will then grab the cards uh, with the jokes that are written on them and read them out loud to you in the moment. I will also be looking for what I call the joke of the night. It is, my, it is on me and me alone to decide who uh, uh, wrote the joke of the... Hi, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> I may have just had a seizure in the middle of that. Did you hear what happened there, Jared? My whole head just kind of collapsed into itself. As I, you know what, we don't have a prompter. Folks, I'm doing this off the top of my head. You know, the one sentence I have to say <laughs> that's scripted, uh, I managed to mangle. Uh, I'm looking for the joke of the night, and whoever gets it gets $50. How's that grab you? You son yeah! Everybody's talking at me. Hey, I'm walking here! <laughs> People claim I don't do impressions. Boom, they're right. <laughs> Let's meet our writers. This gentleman, I love him to death. He recently wrote on the Comedy Central pilot, Jimmy Pardo Needs Jokes. Uh, what else, Jared? What else is happening? Uh, this for the 437th time. <laughs> um, do you, Jimmy, do you know you taught me how to button a three-button jacket? Is that true? Always, sometimes, never. That's exactly right. <laughs> and you know who I learned that from, right? Uh, no. The great Tim Gunn. Yeah. He's great. <laughs> Almost forgot both of his names there. <laughs> yeah. That was... That M kind of held up there for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The great Tim Gunn. <laughs> is it Timothy? You got there. Anyway, Jared Grody, everybody. Pick it up, Kaufman. This uh, beautiful lady here in the middle uh, currently writes on the Nick Jr. show, uh, Parental Discretion with Stephanie Wilder. Taylor. Uh, Stephanie Wilder Taylor. Let's, you know what, let's take it again. I apologize. Uh, uh, it's Stephanie Wilder Taylor. Yeah, you don't have to take no, it I'll again. I'll take it again. I don't want to muck up somebody's name. No, we can use this. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's talking at me. Let's take it back from that. I'm kidding. Um, it's called Parental Discretion with uh, Stephanie Wilder Taylor. That's right. And it's on Nick Jr. And her name is Danielle Koenig. I don't... I don't know what's happened. I don't know what happened. You didn't win anything. You know no, that, No, right? I was just doing a little 30s uh, co physical comedy there. I think it works. I think it works too. Is that what you're writing over there with that Nick Jr.? 
<laughs> it's Nick Mom. It's like the moms leave the TV on and then they watch for themselves after the kids go to bed. Love it. I watch the program. I enjoy it. I appreciate it. I think it's it. fun. It's a, it's a talk show about being moms and such. Basically, yeah. And But dads can certainly relate. I don't We're see why they too. can't watch. Damn right. More the merrier. <laughs> right? Yeah. Speaking of a guy not watching. Um, <laughs> Line starts here. You literally just look the most like Burl Ives I've ever seen you in <laughs> You are morphing into Burl. <laughs> not even Burl Ives, the snowman. I've gained seven pounds since I showed up tonight. <laughs> How much? <laughs> seven. What have you, what, are you just eating like crazy? I there's like licorice back there yeah. and pretzels and some sort of cookie and something. Um, I haven't had any almonds. <laughs> oh yeah, stay away from the healthy stuff, yeah. Boris. <laughs> Boris Hamilton, everybody. You ready to do this? Funny, funny, funny. Uh, our comedian is a very funny man who was recently on the uh, on Conan. Uh, doesn't matter. He's here. He's funny. Shane Moss, everybody. Hey, buddy. Oh, all right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I was thinking recently what I'd do if I had a time machine. I think what I'd like to do, I'd like to go back to the beginning. I'd like to see when Adam and Eve were created. First off, I'd like to see the look on Adam's face when he pops into existence from nothingness that must have messed with his head a little bit he's already fully formed all information already inside of his head so he's not here one moment then the next moment he turns around and oh hey zebra trees lake clouds <laughs> really you would have thought his first five minutes is more like ah! <laughs> then as soon as he was done <laughs> screaming god ripped his rib out like a maniac and then it just appeared into another person. That is a very eventful day, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that conversation between Adam and God. Like, God, can you just remind me one more time, why is it that you have to rip my rib out? I'm kind of attached to it. Oh, well, you're lonely. You're very lonely. <laughs> what are you talking about, God? I've been here for a few moments. Got you, big guy. <laughs> oh, no, you need a lady so you can make babies. All right, well... Whose rib did I come from? Oh, well, I made you out of nothingness. I'm a wizard and I can do anything, remember? <laughs> well, why can't you make her out of nothingness? <laughs> Bitches be complicated, I don't know. <laughs> Predictably, Eve gets all of the blame for all of the sin of humanity because she ate a little apple and everything went to crap. Really? Sounds like something a bunch of dudes would write in a book to me. <laughs> Here's the thing, if God made everything and God knows everything, then he knew what the stuff he made was going to do at the time that he made it. That falls under the umbrella of everything. So when, <laughs> so when he made Eve, he knew she was going to eat the apple, he's gonna have to punish all of us, and then eventually I'd be telling these jokes, so I think we're cool. <laughs> If I bake a cake and I intentionally leave the cake in for too long and the cake burns, I don't go, oh, cake's fault. <laughs> now all cakes must be burned. <laughs> you can't cut her a little bit of slack. She wasn't born yesterday. She was born a moment ago. <laughs> She's got a dude with a boner chasing her around. Another guy up in space barking weird orders that make no sense. Here's some delicious fruit. Don't eat it or you'll know everything. <laughs> then a magic talking snake comes by, says the first reasonable thing she's heard all day, which is like, oh yeah, I think it's all right. <laughs> so what? So everything was perfect, then she ate the apple, then everything went to shit. I don't agree that everything was perfect right here. What about that evil snake? Well, that's not my idea of perfection. If I were God, first thing I would have done, I would have made another God. Just have someone to bounce ideas off of. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, what do you think, God? Oh, God, this is amazing. I really like what you've done down here. Say, a <laughs> crazy idea. What do you think about getting rid of this tricky fucking snake down here? <laughs> I think that ought to take care of a few problems. By the way, I don't mean to insult anyone's religious beliefs. I was, I was raised very religious uh, myself, 
and uh, all my family very religious, all my friends. I just tend to have a bit different beliefs than some people. Uh, for uh, I'm more inclined to believe that God is a woman uh, on account of the silent treatment. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, what do I know? I don't have empirical evidence for everything that I believe. For example, you know the little slit on the tip of the penis, the pee hole there? Uh, I can't prove this. I have no evidence for this. I just believe that when I'm inside of a woman, that's smiling. That's what I believe in my heart, everybody. That's what faith is about. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, great. Great job. Shane Moss, everybody. There he is. Shane Moss. Big Shane Moss. Jared Grody. I've got Jared's. I need uh, Boris Hamilton's silver and gold. <laughs> silver and gold. <laughs> silver and gold. That's Burl Ives. The great Burl Ives. <laughs> You are turning into the snowman. Uh, hey, uh, Shane, I want to make fun of your looks, but you look like a psycho killer. So looking good. I can't tell if you're trying to convert me to Christianity or someone who hates stand-up. Oh, come on, man. Just do it. Look at, but look at how much is on that card. <laughs> Come on. Dude, here we go. Everybody stay with me. Everybody stay with me. Grab the hand of a partner if you need to. We're going to get through this together. You're watching right now on the Nerdist Network. Stick around for Remember Nintendo, hosted by Jonah Ray. Remember Nintendo, the first one? Remember that? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> why was it written? And why did you force me to read it? No regrets. Re no regrets. 100%. You live your life with no regrets. 100% behind that one. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I only sold it 100% and it's still got nothing. Uh, hey, it's always uh, fun to wear a sweater that I was paid to model for Build-A-Bear. <laughs> So whose is that? You can't, is that you, you can't tell your wife's handwriting from Boris's. <laughs> They're both very. Have you ever seen my wife's writing? Disaster. Uh, well, that's a nice piece of business. That's in the running, Boris. Cool. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, my pleasure. <laughs> Shane Moss, more like a shamed mess. <laughs> Come on, it's God. That's good. Oh, it's, no, no. No. Would you agree that's G-O-D-D? Uh, I think Boris thinks God is spelled with two Ds. I'm serious. <laughs> but he just said it's good. It's supposed to be it's good. It's supposed to be it's good. It's, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> well, how about three O's then instead of this fucking mess? I was in a hurry. <laughs> well, the, you know what? And maybe you don't write good with two uh, I don't write like good. God how about that? after a 20-minute God piece. <laughs> It's infuriating. Sorry. By the way, guys, Sorry. plenty of pens and pencils over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> None of Set? them are sharpened. What's that? None of them are sharpened. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Set dressing. Uh, when Shane turned his back on the audience, he's so lucky they didn't run out the door. <laughs> if Shane bakes a cake, can I have some? <laughs> Don't wait looking at me! I didn't write it! Was that, was that still you? Yeah, it was still me. Jesus. I would like some cake. <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> I used the lines. I didn't write all crazy. Uh, other things that are too small, aside from my sweater and my penis, my joke repertoire. <laughs> Uh, hey, so glad the guy from The Killing is sticking around L.A. <laughs> oh, that's a very niche joke. That's, that's a, a good very one, right? niche joke. Uh, didn't think I'd like another screamy comedian since Sam Kinison died. I thought correctly. <laughs> you lost me at telling these jokes. What jokes? 
at one point in his act, he said something about telling jokes and so. <laughs> Boris! I've been doing this joke, as Jared uh, pointed out, 400 and something times. This joke? I've this never, joke? this show, yeah. I've never heard silence like that in my entire life. <laughs> I've been doing standing up comedy since the late 80s when I wore a rolled up sport coat. Uh, s the sleeves, not the jacket itself. <laughs> How do you get my jacket and roll it up? I like to put that around my waist. Shane would be great at voiceovers. They write the material for you. <laughs> Shane's material is as old as Adam and Eve. By default, right? There wasn't even an S in it and you put it in there. <laughs> Shane's material is as old as Adam and Eve, and yes, I put an S in there because it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right. <laughs> right, get out and vote. Uh, okay, good. That's the end of these, and uh, now we got to pick a winner out of these two here. Uh, I got, it's always fun to wear a sweater that would, I was paid to model for Build-A-Bear, and uh, uh, convert me to Christianity or someone who hates stand-up. Boy, that's a B. You say stand-up? Yeah. Stand, stand, Boris. Uh, all right, here we go. 50 bucks. We're going to do a Joker's Wild style. Here we go. Hand out. Hand out. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 50 dollars. Garrett Rohde. Another hand for Shane Moss, everybody. Don't forget to check out my award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny at Podcast.com. Thank you. But before that, a big hand for these great writers, Boris Hamilton, Danielle Koenig, Garrett Grody. I'm Jimmy Pardo. We'll see you next time on Right Now. I can't tell if you're trying to convert me to Christianity or someone who hates stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard worse. I wish they would have been harsher on me. I also liked the guy that just said, if Shane makes cake, I want some for no reason. <laughs> Wasn't over else, just a guy being hungry. I like that. Ha <laughs> ha, idiot! <laughs>